Good morning, folks. We had solar eruptions going off of the limbs and the far side, but nothing Earth-directed. The thin dark lines writhing between the larger dark corona hole patches are a million kilometer long phalanx of plasma filament structures. They become the primary Earth-facing eruption threat as the solar flaring begins to slowly descend, with the big spots ready to depart our view. Goodbye. Meanwhile, Earth's magnetic shield has been struggling for a while here, up to level 2 storm conditions. No recovery with the electrons either. Can you spot the reason? Despite steadier or calming speed and density, the blue phi angle has shifted perfectly. Always tough to call an interaction region versus a sector boundary, but in simplest terms the result is the same. Magnetic character changes in the solar wind, change Earth's magnetosphere. Story of the day today. A large sun-diving comet is heading right at those departing sunspots. You can see her coming into view bottom right here. I do expect this to enter the coronal magnetic field structure within hours. We mentioned coronal holes already. The second one coming in represents a shift back to positive polarity portal connections. It's also transequatorial. Those doing quake prediction tracking Gotta wait for low magnetic unrest for the larger quakes, but let's check in on the planetary canary known as the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. 30 days of quakes finds only 9 on the ridge when we zoom in, and they are grouped by date. Early August with the high watch index, the 14th in the middle of our last quake watch, and over the last 2 days as we peak in this quake watch today and tomorrow. I'll take the lower magnitude quake signals if the big ones stay away. What do you think? Anyway, non-standard physics throwing a devastating right hook and connecting on the jaw of the standard model of physics. Leptons may be small, but they're going to cause a big, big problem for mainstream science. I've also got linked for you a tsunami model from a hypothetical Sicily earthquake. Immediate vicinity would be in bad shape. And folks, the GPM has analyzed Erica and overlaid rainfall with the infrared images. And this leads us into today's feature. Major storm alerts issued for the United States. Erica is only a tropical storm for now, but she is expected to hit hurricane status before making landfall in Florida. The latest path projections are horrifying. Coastal area or not, there is nowhere in the peninsula that would be able to avoid such a thing. But the news would not get much better if it misses Florida. What do you notice here? Or here? How about this? Folks, the water surrounding Florida right now is hotter than the water driving this absurd El Nino. Hottest in the world. If Erica misses, she would strengthen even more on the hot water and then slam into either the Gulf States or the Eastern Seaboard, depending which way it missed. No getting away from this one in the United States. Website members, you did get a new deeper look yesterday. Everyone, time is running out to get your tickets for Observing the Frontier in Pittsburgh this October and the Phoenix event in January. Phoenix event pre-registration discount ends in three days. I've got two flood concerns illuminated by precipitable water in South America, followed by three Pacific storms. The alerts in our top viewer locations, a rerun of those temperature maps of the water around Florida, and then shots of our star to close. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.